You would think looking at the Night Sentinels that their planet was nothing but a borderline peaceful paradise. The species had hit their stride for quite some time and seeing as they were fairly intelligent as well as much stronger than your average human, that they would have kind of, you know, conquered their entire world. Then the added strength of the Maker race allowing them to spread even further than before would mean that their own home base was secured. But the reality couldn't have been further from the truth. The Night Sentinels dealt with their own struggles on Argent Denur like Homo sapiens would on Earth. The reality is, is that there's always some bothersome predators that can still snack on the apex species from time to time. Deep Deeply rooted in the more vulnerable history of Argentinor, at least concerning the Night Sentinels, there existed a beast that was capable of moving in a town very quickly, picking up non-combative townspeople and then flying off with them. The towns were virtually left defenseless during the less technologically advanced portions of their existence, as these creatures were powerful and the walls would do nothing to stop their aerial attacks. As time progressed, the task shifted from marksmen with bows to marksmen with uh, force multipliers to knock them out of the skies. This would prove to be more useful and then drive off these bothersome beasts. But attacks would still continue, ensuring that the Night Sentinels would have to keep a constant watch over the perimeters of their cities. The problem would actually only get worse from here. These creatures were initially animals like you or I, and reacted to pain stimuli amongst other forms of deterrence. However, after the invention of Hell Energy and the corruption of Argent Denur, these creatures would also, too, be corrupted. Turning into demons, they would be known as the Gargoyles. Capable of temporary flight, the Marksmen could now no longer just rely on deterrence, but had to rely on outright bodying these creatures to get them to stop attacking. But what sort of changes were induced by the Hell Energy, and how did this make them more lethal? Well, it's pretty clear what we were discussing today, the Gargoyles from Doom Eternal, so we will also be going over what was mentioned previously, and we'll be going over their relation to the hierarchy of demons, how their existence may explain something about imps, and how their physiology was altered in horrible ways by the demonic Hell Energy exposure. Just like the imps, the Gargoyles are considered to be quite a low-level demon, essentially just a cannon fodder species. For you or I, though, they would be much more horrible than that. In fact, back on Earth, there are logs that mention of a huge battle taking place with many destroyers, battleships, and everything off the coast of Europe. They were basically attempting to bombard the cities to stop the demon threat from advancing. Things were going well until the gargoyles showed up and decimated the entire fleet, silencing the opposition to the demonic threat using ocean-based tactics. For every single gargoyle that was blown apart, two more would show up and grab crew members, break into ships, and eviscerate the crew, or just basically completely melt soldiers with the acid that they were able to spit. Essentially, things didn't look great for humanity as this threat wasn't easily countered. For the Slayer, however, they're still kind of low-level demons. But what I find most interesting, actually, is a specific codex relating them to the imps. So this is what the codex says. Like their imp brethren, the gargoyle is an agile, relentless pack hunter. Native to the Sentinel world, this beast has plagued the Sentinel Guard for centuries. As one of the few demon breeds that could bypass the walled defenses of Sentinel Prime, the gargoyle would appear without warning warning and claim hapless townspeople before disappearing into the wasteland. Only the most skilled marksmen of the Night Sentinels could intercept this aerial threat, a peril which demanded an ever-vigilant watch over the city's perimeters. Now, a couple of possibilities to explain this codex exists. Again, due to the fact that gargoyles are considered low-level demons, much like how imps are low-level demons, they could be calling them brethren, sort of like in that respect. Or the possibility does exist that because they are both demons corrupted by the same energy, that has kind of caused a relation to form between them. But with that said, in some lore, it actually refers to them as literal cousins to one another, which would support actually a lot of the points that I have been making over the years doing these Doom videos. But to understand those points, we must first take a look at the Gargoyle's morphology and see how the Hell Energy has affected it and how it's been altered. So, oh man, it's been several weeks since I've said this, but it's like riding a bike, you never forget. Starting with the feet, we see that this particular creature has a digital grade structuring of the legs as it walks on the balls of its feet. Three claws are on either foot, and they come out several inches in length with several of the claws bolstered with lightly sharpened metal allowing them to be even more lethal than normal and pierce armor should there be any resistors. The foot itself is quite long, running up to the ankles, and on the back exists a sort of dew claw talon. Before its monstrous transformation, it may have either helped grasp onto prey or acted as a defensive talon, much like how roosters use their talons to fight predators and one another. Moving further up the leg, we can see that the ankle actually bends at around 90 degrees, causing the tibia and fibula bones, based on human morphology that is, as it really could just be a single bone in there because you know different species different internal anatomy but this is going to run parallel to the ground however they are able to stand more upright increasing their height considerably the knees are shaped much like a human knee and the quadriceps and hamstrings actually are in comparable locations to humanity interestingly enough moving up to the pelvis like with most demons this area has been bolstered this is once again likely due to the osseous manipulation that we have seen hell energy actually impart into every creature
character it affects, such as horns on the marauders, or a single ocular cavity that can sometimes form within humans who have been altered, or even the larger brow ridge that we have seen with some soldiers who have defended Earth during the invasion after the portals opened up. This pelvic girdle, however, would help protect the creature to varying degrees as it flanks either side of the abdomen, almost up to where the false ribs would be located. The abdomen has a sucked-in appearance, but only skin exists here with no discernible armor protecting it, making it a massive weak point should any creature get a shot in here. Moving up to the thoracic area, we can see the rib cage almost appears to be in two parts. The lower, where the false ribs appear to be numbering about four or five on each side, and they are actually called false ribs because they do not connect with the sternum. So if you didn't know that, now you know that. However, the top portion of the rib cage does connect to a robust pointed sternum. Not only that, but this rib cage juts outward, likely housing larger than normal lungs to aid in keeping the body properly oxygenated during flight, so fatigue would not set in as quickly. Moving up to the shoulders, we can see that this creature could be considered to have very light armor. The shoulders have a ridge protecting the anterior deltoid region, bolstering it somewhat from attacks on this critical joint, but overall, the upper body is very exposed to damaging hits and blows. An average person would be able to impart enough damage with the force multiplier to take it out, but then the issue becomes how many of these things would show up to attack. Moving down the arms, we get to the biceps and triceps. Now this creature obviously used its arms for grasping purposes or even walking, much like how a chimpanzee might, as the humerus bone is actually quite short in comparison with the forearm. The biceps and triceps themselves are not very large when compared to the legs, meaning that likely the legs were used for more offensive purposes and were preferred in engagements. That said, however, moving down to the forearms, things are much different. First, the radia and ulna bone are quite long. This has stretched out the tendons and muscles within the arm, but likely this was done after the transformation into a demon, judging by the skin damage. However, due to how it walks, likely the forearm was still longer than the upper arm, even in its native form. In the forearm has been grafted between the radius and ulna bone on either arm are two large metal blades. The location of it would imply that there are two bones here in an effort to support the blade, otherwise it could just rip out of the muscle after only a few hits. Moving down to the hands, we see that the blade has completely split them in half. This addition seemed to be quite necessary to make it more lethal as the claws the creature possesses do not appear very long, sharp, or useful. Again, the upper body likely played more of a supportive role when abducting townspeople with a lower body, pulling most of the weight based on the muscle size and location, although the arms could likely have been used to sort of like help hold people as well, and also aid them in walking as mentioned previously. Moving around to the back of this creature, we begin to see the aforementioned bone growth. The vertebrae, as with most demons, has now exited the skin and continue to grow outwards. This has shown that the vertebrae has been strengthened, but all this bone growth will have an effect on this creature. Moving back up, we get to the wings, which actually, considering the size of the creature, are proportionally small. Almost like the wings of a bat that are made out of skin that branches out on finger-like protrusions and then are tipped with bones on the ends. However, these will not be used in any combative situation as if they are damaged, the creature will likely no longer be able to fly. And then we get to something rather interesting. Around the lower neck, flanking each side, appears to be something that almost looks like the pelvic girdle. Now, it's not a pelvic girdle, but this extra protrusion of bone would have likely have been the shoulder blades that have moved up and out. Their purpose would be to protect the wings from blows coming from straight forward, and when the wings are tucked in, the tops would reside under these bones for further protection. Moving further up past the altered shoulder blades, we see the trapezius muscles in this creature are quite large to aid in the flapping of the wings, and the neck itself has been elongated to keep the head out of the way from the wings and not get hit. And then, getting to the head of this creature, we can see that there are some interesting features that may indicate a relation to other demons. First, the jaw has been cracked in half, much like how it has been exhibited in these other demons. And this again is likely due to the bone growth putting pressure on this central portion of the mandible as it grows, which then breaks the arch. The jaw, however, has been bolstered by what appears to be a secondary metal jaw on either side. And this jaw can now open up sideways, increasing the size of the mouth by quite a bit. The zygomatic area is skeletal, but still has all the teeth it originally had, but like with humans, they have been lengthened. But uh, this is actually just a pure carnivore, so likely this lengthening was not as much as needed as it is with humans. Now, there is no nose in this creature, as either it never existed or was lost long ago in the transformation. This, however, is pretty standard to see on any of the demons, as most of the skin on their face, and cartilage for that matter, is lost. The cheekbones are fairly large in this demon, showing, again, bone growth is quite prevalent, and exposed muscle can be seen on either side of the head, likely where the ears originally sat when this creature was an animal, but they have long since been lost 
in this transformation. A central ridge of bone now sits at the top of the skull as well, and the eyes glow yellow in this beast, showing that the hell energy it possesses may be slightly stronger than that of imps, if coloring is believed to indicate strength. Overall, the gargoyle is likely larger now as a demon than it ever was as a standard animal. The reasoning for this thinking is the only temporary flight. As the bones began growing on this beast and the muscle also began growing, the wings appear to have lagged behind in some ways. Because they did not keep up concerning growth and because of the weight of the body has increased so dramatically, this is a two-pronged issue. The wings are powerful but would only give the creature the ability to fly for temporary periods of time. Sort of like how if birds had solid bones, they would not be able to fly because of the weight it would be far too great for their wings to handle. Likely when a gargoyle was an animal, it would have been probably smaller than a night sentinel, but not by much. It was able to pick up people and then fly off with them temporarily, but likely couldn't sustain flight for long periods of time, handling that sort of weight. However, because they were able to do that with the wings that they had as they changed into what they were, probably the weight of a night sentinel actually was added, which in turn meant they went from sustained flyers to temporary ones. So now we have to talk about something that is fairly interesting, at least to me, and hopefully it's interesting to you as well. The concept of evolution of demons on this channel is pretty firmly rooted, as probably you all know. With new information comes new ideas, but so far, most of the lore on these demons and where they come from seems to support the running hypothesis I have that they were just literal animals twisted and changed by demonic energy. But they are different from one another due to fact that what was on the planet and who was on the planet at the time they were invaded. For instance, the relationship between the Hell Knights and Barons of Hells, or the Imps and the Prowlers. But with that said, specifically in this instance, with the logs mentioning the Imps are the Brethren of the Gargoyles, if taken in a literal sense, this would mean that there is a relationship between the Imps, and subsequently, there must be a relationship to the Prowlers in some way. So let's take a look at how they may possibly be linked. Now, the thing I know about Imps are, is that they possess the same three toes as the Gargoyles, and also seemingly possess a lot of the same structure of the legs, bony growths on their back, and the same lower and upper arm ratio that the gargoyles have as well. Comparing the two, it's pretty clear to see that there are a lot of similarities between them in key areas, showing that they may in fact be somewhat related. What's more interesting is this would imply that the imps also hail from Argent Denur, as well as the gargoyles, and they all must kind of be native together. Jumping over to the prowlers, we also see things become even more clear. Appearing as a much larger version of the imp and gargoyle, they still possess the same characteristics as the two, but with heavier arms armoring and more muscle, and even more so on their upper bodies. So the question then becomes, how are these creatures related to one another and who is who? Well, I believe personally that the imps are a separate subspecies or an immature version of the prowler. If they are a subspecies, this would make more sense to me seeing as they are morphologically different from the prowlers in several ways, including coloring and armoring, but they are still similar enough to be related distantly. The biggest defining difference is the cracked jaw. If there were an immature version, the jaw on the imp should also still be cracked by the growth, but instead, they appear just to have more armoring there. And this would indicate that the jaw size and structuring was different upon its transformation, which allowed it to stay intact. So then, what is a gargoyle to a prowler? I believe that they may be directly related to one another, but sexual dimorphism may have something to do with it. It's impossible to know which is which, as organs designating such tend to fall off after hell energy exposure. I mean, look no further than the summoners for something like that. But it's clear whether the gargoyles are male or female, or the prowler is male or female, doesn't really matter. The prowler is land-based, terrestrial beast that, due to its armoring, would likely be the competing mate. In its natural environment, it would be attacking and defending itself and looking for mates due to the naturally occurring armor and offensive capabilities that it has. The gargoyle, on the other hand, is the reproducing mate. It does not have to, in a sense, compete with other gargoyles for prowlers, unless it's the standard competition, sort of like, technically on this planet, female uh, humans are in competition with female humans, and male Males are in competition with other males, but for different reasons. But basically, they would not be fighting as much. They are able to defend themselves with talons that they have on the back of their legs and do possess the arms and claws to kind of fend things off that way. But with their delicate wings, likely they would be less aggressive than the prowlers would be in competition, making them more docile of a species, ironically. However, predators still have to eat no matter what they are, and considering they hail from the wasteland of Argentinur, they would likely do the hunting as they were capable of flight, whereas the prowlers would would probably prowl the area and then stay back behind in general. It would appear that because of this relation to one another, these animals were likely bad enough on their own and the Night Sentinels were on the menu for quite some time. But once they converted into demons, the problems got even worse as the walls really 
probably could just keep out the imps and prowlers, although a prowler can kind of teleport, so they could have maybe moved past the walls, but they would be quite unsuccessful even further in keeping out the gargoyles. While being a weaker enemy for the Doomslayer, they can still inflict a fair amount of damage. The gargoyles possess the ability to spit up acid that can actually burn the Slayer's armor, inflicting damage that it really, if it should hit a regular person in no armor, likely it could eat through their skin and organs, allowing for infection at minimum to take hold, or even send the person into outright shock. Obviously, this would be a great hunting technique, as if you're running down a human, hurling acid at them could damage their legs to the point that they couldn't run or really fight back, or it could just outright eat through their spine, rendering them immobile so that they could be carried away and eaten. The fact is that this acid is highly corrosive and damaging, which made a battle out at the ocean even that much more lethal, seeing as it could eat through armoring, it could eat through the hull of a boat, sinking it in the process. So likely to do this, the acid would have to be rather strong, and you may be asking yourself, well, how is that even possible? It's organic. That acid would burn a hole through it. But that's the power of mucus, my friend. Acid has a tough time eating through it. Hydrochloric acid, which is contained in our own stomach, has the capability of dissolving metal, and yet we aren't eating our own organs. Now, likely because it's a different planet, that means different species, and that might mean different acids. It's completely possible that this creature has nitric acid or even chloric acid at its disposal, which would be so powerful, it could literally cause instant burns to skin, the brittling of metals, and in general, would act rather quickly on a target, inducing the damaging effects that we have seen. All this said, I would lean towards chloric acid being the culprit due to its greenish coloring and the fact that chloric acid, when oxidized, turns green. We can assume that the atmosphere of Argent Denor is oxygen-based, seeing as the Doomslayer survived when transported there and he had didn't have his armor on, and you see that he have his helmet, so he's just breathing in the air. So ergo, the atmosphere has to be similar to Earth's, because this idea can also be applied to the coloring as it exists on both Earth and Argent Denor. Now, apart from regular humans, the Night Sentinels interacting with the gargoyles and being subsequently dissolved, the question is raised. What happens when the Doomslayer interacts with the gargoyles? Well, he doesn't really care all that much about the acid unless you're playing on, like, Ultra Nightmare, but his main concern is ripping and tearing, obviously. When going in for the glory with a gargoyle, there are many different ways to take them out. Like, so many ways. But most either involve bisecting it with a chainsaw, cutting them, or removing the head of the creature with your blade. But the most fun in my opinion, and after trying to get this done several times, seems to be utilizing the arm blade, which is rare. You see, the arm blade was put there for the explicit purpose to be used on others. But with the Slayer, you can cut off the arm blade and jam it down the center ridge of its skull and give its brains a breath of fresh air. Overall, I'm thinking that my hypothesis on the evolution of these creatures on separate conquered planets is becoming more and more feasible based Based upon the native gargoyle we see hailing from Argent Denor, and the fact that the imps are said to be cousins and brethren to the gargoyles. This coupled with the split jaws and the complete differences between these forms of demons and the larger ones such as the Hell Knight and Barons, Tyrants, Mancubus, etc. could indicate that these aren't just souls extracted from the bodies, or at least the outcasts, sent to wander the plains of hell, but are actually their own species who were corrupted much like humanity was. 